Howdy Ute Builders. I'm gonna try to piece together a hitch video for you. This is about putting a hitch uh, specifically here on the Mark V, but some of it will apply to uh, Mark IVs and Beetles also. Specific to Mark V, you can get a factory, an aftermarket hitch that bolts right on. Uh, Kurt and the other one is draw tight. Kurt and draw tight both make one. They're in the neighborhood of 150 bucks. They're very, very similar. Um, they're okay, but I have some issues with, uh, there's some things I don't like about them. So here is the draw tight. So this is the draw tight for Mark fives. Uh, it does bolt into the frame. So this side goes up onto the actual frame. And then the other side, you drop your uh, rear exhaust muffler, the muffler hanger, uh, and two bolts. You put in a longer bolt, and then the muffler hanger hangs underneath this. It, it works okay. I have two complaints about them. First is, it's only available in one and a quarter. Nobody makes a two-inch receiver, and I have too much invested in two-inch stuff. Uh, I have a motorcycle carrier, a jet ski carrier, bicycle carrier, uh, and then a various assortment of hitches. So you can put an adapter on it that goes one and a quarter to two inch. Uh, that adds some more leverage to your load, which sort of decreases your tongue weight, uh, your tongue weight capability. Uh, and I'm going to try not to turn this into a towing class because I'm not the towing expert. I do plenty of towing, and it's important to me to be able to carry some stuff. Uh, but... So that's one thing I don't like about this one is that it's only available in one and a quarter. The other problem I have with it is it is very low. So they designed it that way so it clears everything. Um, but it hangs low and then if you have a receiver, a, a, a hitch in it, it's going to drag as you come out of the parking lot or what have you, uh, especially if the car's a little bit lowered. So that's kind of a drag too. And in my opinion, it detracts from the look of the car. I love the way the rear end on these cars look. I mean, we spend a lot of time putting this whole rear end on and I don't want it to be distracted by this goofy hitch sticking out real, real low. And it just, it draws your attention and distracts you from the good looking rear end on the car. Um, you got to put in your, the, the a drop hitch upside down so it raises the ball or your trailer will be sitting really nose low. Uh, and the rating on it is 150 pounds of tongue weight and 1,500 pounds of tow capability. That's, that's not too bad, but tongue weight of 150 pounds is less than I like. I can't put a motorcycle on that. Uh, can't put a jet ski on that. Uh, you know, a couple of bicycles is okay. Uh, but that's really all you can do with it. So... It's not bad. It, it works. It's a whole lot easier than trying to fab something up. So that's one option that's out there. When you talk about the Mark IVs, things change. So the aftermarket one for Mark IV, and I believe it's the same two companies, Draw Tight um, and Kurt. Uh, the, the Mark IV, actually, it doesn't all bolt into the frame. One side gets into the frame. The other side bolts into the sheet metal of the spare tire well and you put a big well they give you a, a plate that's maybe five by three I've always fabricated a bigger plate to fit in there because I don't like bolting in the sheet metal for towing so mark fours I really don't like the aftermarket hitches um, and again they're one and a quarter nothing available so I want to do something a little more robust so one of the options and, that, and this is really my favorite, but it requires the most fab work and it requires somebody that can do pretty good welding. I'm okay welding. I don't trust one of my butt welds as a towing weld. Uh, my, my skill level isn't there. My brother-in-law helps me out sometimes. He is of that skill level and I trust his welds and I trust his judgment. Uh, so he fabbed one up for me that I put on a wagon, and I really wish I would have just kept doing that all along. Let me get another training aid. So basically, <clears throat> you take off your factory bumper, and you can do this on the Beetle too. So this, 
this idea will apply across the board. Uh, get you some two inch box that's fairly heavy duty. This is a little bit overkill. This is actually to make a new um, tongue to go in the receiver, put your hitch on. You can order it on Amazon or go to your local metal supplier. Uh, as you can see, this is pretty heavy duty. Um, that's a little bit overkill. Uh, I would go the next size down. The, the 1 8 should be plenty adequate. A couple pieces of that, take off the factory bumper. Some of the cars, you have to cut a little tab that opens that frame up so that you can slide this into the frame of the car and then find the spots where you can drill through. There are a couple factory holes, so you can start with that and it already goes through the frame. Then you drill through this and put a couple of bolts through. Sorry, one more training aid. To These little wire fishers are awesome. Uh, basically, you thread a bolt onto that and then you can push this up through the frame and pull it down and it brings your bolt out. Uh, so you can do bolts, instead of having to go all the way through the frame, you can do one half of the frame and from the center of your two inch box. So basically you can fish that through this way. This comes with most hitches. That's where, where I get them and I just save them. So I have a few laying on the bench. So now you've got a good solid mounted to the frame point where you can mount or weld or bolt a hitch to. So either fabricate or buy a crossbar. So this is actually a draw type hitch for another application that I cut the, the welds on those side plates. So I have a crossbar that has a two inch hitch on it. The problem with this particular one, and honestly, I'm sorry, I don't remember what car this is to, uh, it's to a truck, uh, is that this hitch is very long. It's about nine inches. So I didn't use this one on this car behind me because it was too long, it stuck out too far. And originally I was trying to get it to line up behind the roll pan. So I put a flip up license plate, cut a hole, and it's hidden all the time and it's not so low. Uh, this one wouldn't fit too long even if I did some trimming on the, uh, on the body of the car. So it's heavy, I'm gonna put it down. But that's the, that's the good attachment way. That gives you some options then for how you attach it from this to that crossbar. Oh, there's the model number if you're interested. So I'm not saying this one fits because it definitely doesn't fit. It'll take some modification. But use that example of a side plate, right? And so the crossbar will fit through that hole and you can weld it. And then you can bolt that onto what's sticking out of the frame. Now, this one in particular, you can see that it mounts just below where the bumper is. And that is gonna put you at the lip of the license plate area on the roll pan. So I've played around with this quite a bit. And to get the hitch to actually be behind the license plate, it needs to be very close to even with where your frame is. So that would mean getting this guy to line up about like that. And that's where knowing somebody or being able to do good welds will, will work. And so you can kind of set it up for however you want. This happens to be 37042. This is the one that I actually put on this car. Half of what I did on this car, I would do again. Half of what I did, I would not. But particularly if you don't have a welder, um, you may be able to make this work for you. Um, so then the next problem, if you do manage to do a hidden hitch where it's behind the license plate is, well, how do you get the pin in when you put your receiver in? And here's the answer to that or, or, or what I like to do. So these are a little bit expensive. They're 80 bucks, uh, but the lock is what functions the pins there, which is really cool uh, because now when you have a hidden hitch, you don't have to be able to access the pin. You can just slide this in and then turn the key and now it's locked in to the pin holes. So you don't have to have access to it. So that's how I deal with having a hidden hitch. Okay. On the Mark V, it's challenging to make a hidden hitch because you don't have much room. 
there's a lump from the spare tire well that sticks out to the back of the car and limits the space between the roll pan and the body of the car. And there just isn't any hitches that have that room. So I kind of did a hybrid on this car. It's not a hidden hitch. It sits below the roll pan, but it sits just about, if that's the back of the roll pan, it sits just even with it and just barely below it. But I had to do some welding on the car. So I'm gonna take the camera off and we'll go look into the back of the car and I'll show you that weld. So those of you that have messed with a Mark V are familiar with this lump. So I cut it and welded in a plate and then seam sealed the crap out of my welds because typically they rust easily. To make room for the hitch to sit in and not stick out so far, just barely sticking out past the roll pan and it sits up significantly higher than the manufactured ones. So, okay, I kind of like that. It's not exactly where I wanted it. So there's the hole that normally, you know, the bumper bolts on to there, and there's a couple other bolts. So you take the bumper off, and there's one little tab you gotta cut off, and then you can slide two inch um, in, inside the frame, and it comes out really nice. So that piece, I recommend uh, how whatever the second half of hitch you're going to work out that is a sound application uh, for towing so what that looks like then under the car kind of a pain here and your exhaust of course on the left is in your way so you could see where I've just cut it off to get it out of the way and then there's a heat shield an aluminum heat shield that's normally here so you got to remove that to get to this I plan on changing the muffler out anyway, so I just went ahead and hacked it off. But here's what you do. Some grade A bolt, grade eight bolts or better, uh, going through the, the frame, and then of course through your two inch box. All right, so then I just took this, uh, this sizable hitch and played with the brackets till I got it to bolt on. And you can see I went four bolts through there. Um, this bracket is independent of that piece, which is independent of this piece. So you got to run two bolts. I got two going forward, two coming back uh, from the inside out. Um, so make sure you use all the bolts because there's some strength there. So that roll pan, you know, the roll pan has a forward, forward slope to the bottom. Or is that a, a rearward slope? Anyway, it slopes. Uh, so it's going to sit right about here. So it's not a hidden hitch, but that's pretty good. And this is going to be a fairly utilitarian build. Um, the same thing on this side as on the other side. So that is what I ended up doing. I think this will work on the Beetle also. Uh, the Beetle's uh, geometry is a little bit different. The roll pan, this actually would come out just about right in the, um, in the license plate area on the Beetle, if I recall correctly. Um, so play around with it a little bit. Here's another option just from going from those factory hitches. Let me throw this disclaimer out there. This is all my opinions. This is not necessarily DOT certification or uh, uh, vehicle code certifications or requirements. This is my opinions and, and how I'm approaching this. So please take it all with a grain of salt and what, what you build on your car is your responsibility. Uh, so be safe. So that's a couple of ideas about hitches. Hopefully it gives you an option or some ideas for another version. A um, couple of things I will throw out here to be cautious of. Um, I highly recommend getting grade 8 or grade 10, if you're using metric, bolts. Uh, shear strength is much higher. Uh, use at least 7 sixteenths. Um, uh, you can use 3 eighths. Uh, 3 eighths or bigger. Um, 3 or 4 bolts. Anywhere there's that load, um, the shear strength on the grade eight bolts or in the metric grade tens um, will just give you a little bit of safety. Uh, depends what you're planning on towing, but make sure your braking is adequate. Uh, as always, you know, towing doesn't just put you in danger, it puts anybody else on the road in danger if you screwed something up. Make sure you have a place for your safety chains, et cetera, et cetera. So be safe when you're setting up for towing and if you're fabricating something yourself. Um, 
But the point being, be safe, be careful. Uh, don't put yourself or somebody else in danger. But you can tow pretty, pretty decent loads with these cars. Boys, you could put a 5,000 pound hitch on it to tow 1,000 pounds, and there's nothing wrong with that. But don't put a 1,000 pound hitch on and try to tow 2,000 with it. It's very tempting. You get that built, and then somebody says, oh, hey man, can you pick up that uh, stump grinder for me on Saturday? You got a car that'll tow it, blah, blah. Well, maybe your hitch, you know, make sure that your hitch is, is gonna handle it before you're out on the public roads with it. I hope y'all have success in figuring out how you wanna do a, a hitch if you are interested in a hitch. It makes the ute even more utilitarian, being able to tow a little bit. I love towing a couple of jet skis and then having the dolly and the fuel tanks and all that stuff in the bed. Uh, when we go out to the beach with jet skis or same with motorcycles, take a little motorcycle trailer um, or put one bike in the, in, the, uh, in the bed and then two on the, on the trailer, whatever your combo is. Um, so towing with a ute is possible. Takes a little bit of fabricating sometimes depending on what all you wanna tow. I wish you all good luck with your project. Be safe and have fun.